Cromer, known as the gem of the Norfolk coast, is a small town on the north coast of the English county of Norfolk. A number of notable people have connections with the town, such as Edward Back, the creator of Back Flower Remedies, whose house can be seen just along the seafront. Emily Wilding Davidson, one of the suffragettes who fought for women to have the right to vote. James Dyson, the creator of the Dyson vacuum cleaner. And Charles Mays Wick, an artist who was born in Nottingham like myself. Being a Nottingham based artist, and having a birthday that is almost exactly a century apart from Wig, I thought I'd tread in his footsteps and produce a short film about the town following my recent visit. Cromer is likely to have been a settlement dating back to around 1262, where it first appears in a will. The name is supposedly derived from Cromere, another word for lake, but this has been contended over history. It is well known in the region for its crab and lobster produce, since the seabed has a lot of flint and chalk which filters the water, giving them their unique taste. It was a popular holiday destination during the early 19th century, particularly among rich Norfolk families who have come to play golf and use the pier as a popular hangout in summer. In 1883, Daily Telegraph journalist and theatre critic Clement Scott, known also for picking fights with William Archer and George Bernard Shaw at the time, described the coastline around Cromer as Poppyland because of the vast amount of poppies that grew in the area. At the time, this drew in many tourists to this part of the country. There have been numerous storm surges that have caused significant damage to the pier at Cromer in recent years. In 2013, and then again most recently in 2017. The town had also previously suffered substantial damage in the Second World War due to bombings. The Cromer Museum apparently has a collection of photographs by Olive Edis, the first female British war photographer. But I couldn't get access during my visit unfortunately, due to many places in the town being closed over the winter period. Other landmarks in the town include the 17th century Red Lion Hotel, which overlooks the seafront and is one of the oldest and most notable inns in Cromer. The Hotel de Paris, which is situated in front of and overlooking the pier. Originally built in 1820 for Lord Suffield, it was converted into a hotel in 1830 by Pierre Le Francois, who came to England during the French Revolution. The hotel served as a primary boarding house for the increasing number of rich tourists visiting the area at the time. And Cromer Hall, which was destroyed by fire but rebuilt in 1829. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, author of the Sherlock Holmes books, stayed at the hall in 1901. It is during his time in this area that he heard about the legend of Black Shook, the demon dog of East Anglia, which in turn inspired his writing for the infamous Hound of the Baskervilles. Black Shook has been part of the region's folklore for centuries, supposedly having been spotted around the Cambridgeshire Fenlands, Norfolk, Suffolk and Essex. The name Shook possibly comes from the old English word Skuka, or Succubus, meaning witch. But others have suggested it originates from local dialect, meaning shaggy and hairy. Shook is supposedly identified by his large physique, his shadow-like presence and glowing red eyes that often appear through the mist. He is seen as an omen of death and some local tales around Cromer in particular 
described the dog as leaping out of the sea, befriending young children and luring them to their death in the murky waters. Another mysterious piece of Cromer history involves the lost village of Shipden, just 500 metres out to sea from the pier. Shipden had its own church and boasted a fairly substantial population for its time. Unfortunately, in the 14th century, the village was swallowed up by the sea and lost the time. Reports from the 18th century state that the church tower, known locally as Church Rock, could still be seen poking out from the water at low tide. Local legends used to state that ghostly bells would ring from the old church to warn of coming storms, and only a fool would go out fishing if the chimes were heard. In the August of 1888, a steamboat full of tourists left Great Yarmouth to sail the Norfolk Coast Line towards Cromer. Upon almost reaching its destination, the boat came to a sudden crunch as it had hit the submerged church tower. The tourists were rescued, but attempts to save the boat had failed, and it, along with the old tower, had to be blown up to prevent the incident from happening again. Almost a century later, Yarmouth's Sub Aqua Club dived down to the old steamer. Upon reaching the seabed, they were astounded to be swimming down the ghostly 14th century streets, which were once populated. The history of Cromer extends much further though, as the cliffs along the shoreline are absolutely riddled with Ice Age fossils. The church in Cromer itself was originally built in the 14th century, but fell into disrepair. It was rebuilt again in only the 19th century by architect Arthur Blomfield. Its tower is apparently the highest in the county of Norfolk, standing at 48.87 metres. Finally, Cromer houses the first lifeboat station in Norfolk, built in 1804. Henry Blogg is somewhat of a local historical hero, having been awarded the gold RNLI medal three times and the silver four times for bravery out at sea. The current lifeboat station is situated offshore at the end of the pier. Cromer is a small town but like so many places, has a rich history of characters, landmarks and folklore. It doesn't boast many modern tourist attractions, but this I find is part of its charm. If in Norfolk, stop by for a short visit, but just remember to beware of black shuck, and don't go swimming when the ship then bells are chiming.